Hey guys, welcome to the MPC podcast. Been a hot minute. So today we're going to be talking about your client's relationship with food and how to optimize it. Had a really good coaching call earlier with Mr. Dylan from the Mamba Group, uh, going through a bunch of really cool questions he had to do stuff with his clients. But then also he asked a really, really cool question. Uh, what is a good relationship with food? When do we go about fixing it? What clients do we need to work with? What are some strategies that can be used? But also, and the best part was, does your dieting context change what is considered a healthy relationship with food? So I wanted to dive into that for a little bit. So the first thing, your relationship with food, in my opinion, is probably the greatest determinant of your long-term body composition results. If you have a good relationship with food, you'll always have pretty good body composition results. If you have a poor relationship with food, it's a lot harder for you to achieve excellent body composition results. So what is a good relationship with food? First thing we need to consider is where the client is and what their particular goals are and what kind of dieting phase they're going through. Uh, this is where a lot of people don't really touch on it with relationship with food. They just say it's, you know, using food as a source of pleasure, but not overly indulging, blah, blah, blah. When they don't think about, you know, what a diet is, for example, or what someone's trying to achieve from body composition point of view. So we're going to break down dieting into three parts. We've got uh, cutting, maintenance, and hypercaloric massing diet phases. So each of those have a different relationship with food. So when someone is in a high O caloric state, so they're in a fat loss phase or in a cutting phase, one of the key components of having a healthy relationship with food is not having food envy. So being able to go to events and trying to go to being able to go to different places and seeing other people eat food that you can't eat and being okay with the fact that you've made that choice and taking ownership of that. So you don't see these foods, these delicious things like ice creams, pizzas, et cetera, and totally lose, you know, lose your bananas and eat everything. You can be aware that those foods, even though they're delicious, aren't serving you right now for your particular goal. It doesn't make those foods good or bad because one of the key components of having a good relationship with food is food has no moral value. It just is food. Um, but we can realize that at that point in time, that food is, you know, it's delicious and it's amazing, but it's not right for us right now. The next thing in the cutting phase is to be aware of how we feel about food, in particular our appetite and our satiety singles. And the fact that being hungry in a calorie deficit is going to be a side effect that you will have to deal with. It is one of the cost of admissions. So if you want to lose a whole bunch of body fat and get really, really lean, there's nothing wrong with it if you do or you don't. But if you are going to do it, be aware that that's the cost of admission, that you will feel hunger at some point. You will go without food at some point, And at some times you will be a little bit grumpy, a little bit tired about it. But being okay with it because you made that choice is part of having a good relationship with food in a calorie deficit. The next part about having a good relationship with food in the calorie deficit is making sure you choose foods that align with your goals and help you feel the best you can. So generally in a fat loss diet, a lot of people try and follow out if it fits your macros approach, where they're trying to fit in as much food as they can that is not healthy as long as they hit their macros and still achieve their weight loss goals. Now, in terms of that being a valid way to do things, it's absolutely very valid to do. It will work, uh, but are there side effects to that or consequences of that, not side effects rather? Uh, yes, absolutely. There are some consequences that have to be dealt with that. So one of the consequences of that is the fact that you'll have a harder time achieving satiety and you'll have a harder time resisting temptation in the future. There's a ton of research that shows that eating more bland foods in a uh, fat loss phase is a better way to maintain hunger signals and to also lower your interest in food. So once we've covered the hypocaloric dieting and the relationship with food, we're going to go into one where most people have talked about, which is in our maintenance phases or the phases where we're just trying to consolidate either our muscle gain phase, our muscle gain phase or our fat loss phase, which is its maintenance. Um, and the first thing about relationship with food in this phase is we're not using food as a tool to maintain our emotional health. We're not using food as a crutch. We're not using food as a way to deal with stress. These are all things that um, dictate an unhealthy relationship with food because you're asking food to provide you emotional support, which is something that food can't really do, okay? And if people are going to go into a fat loss phase, if they're using food to deal with their emotional stress, the chances that they'll be able to, you know, actually maintain their diet and actually get the results they're after are very, very slim. It's generally not going to happen. 
Okay. Uh, the next thing with that is realizing that food has no intrinsic moral value. So there's no food that's necessarily good or bad. It's just what's relative for your particular goals, what's relevant to your needs at that time. So a lot of clients and a lot of people really will struggle with that. They'll put these moral values in food, such as gluten is bad, sugar is bad, whatever is bad, when all of them have a particular place in the diet and can be very, very useful for a number of different things. When we put a moral value on food, we then tend to beat ourselves up if we eat it or not. So if we don't put a moral value on food, what it allows us to do, which is the next component of having a healthy relationship with food, is it allows us to then enjoy social situations and enjoy food as part of those social situations and to feel okay with that. So if we go to an event or something like that and we're not really trying to lose weight, we're not in a serious dieting phase, there's nothing wrong with having cake. There's nothing wrong with having a drink. There's nothing wrong with enjoying the delicious food at that party and enjoying all the social benefits that come alongside with that. So, you know, creating memories of people, spending time, being happy, all that stuff is very, very valuable for your health. The other side of that is, though, is because we realize that we have a health, well, we have a healthy relationship with food. We realize that we don't need to binge on that food to get the outcome that we want. So having a healthy relationship with food and maintenance is eating to our energy needs or to the point of fullness and satiety, rather than to the point of absolutely stuffing ourselves to the brim. So when someone's in a maintenance phase, they can go along and they can go eat food at parties and stuff like that. They just need to be mindful of portions and how they feel. And generally, most of the time, it's going to have a very limited effect on their weight. And then the final part of having a good relationship with food in a maintenance phase is you're obviously not using it as emotional crutch, et cetera is the fact that you recognize hunger signals and you have a decent selection or a decent amount of food habits that are part of your life, how you do things each and every day, which allow the dietary indiscretions to not make so much of an impact. So a good relationship food is having decent habits. So, you know, eating and chewing properly, having protein and plants with most meals or preferably every meal, uh, you know, eating to the point of being satisfied, not the point of being stuffed or not binging and only indulging until you've had enough. These are all components of a good part of food. Now, finally, now we need to look at relationship food in a massing phase. So the first thing is food has no moral value and so-called junk food can be very applicable in a mass gaining phase as a simple way to ensure that you get enough calories to hit your goals that you need to gain the weight that you need to gain. That being said, you're not overdoing it like you're not trying to eat 8,000 calories a day to gain more weight because you recognize that you're going to get way more fat than muscle at that point, but recognizing that these foods can be very, very useful uh, to actually gain weight is very, very important. The next thing from a healthy relationship with food is to actually realize in a mass gaining phase and be okay with the fact that you're not going to really want to eat and you're going to uh, struggle with being full all the time. And that's okay. And you generally will tend not to use food to deal with emotional stress. Of course, you can't be bothered eating anyway because it's what you've been doing all the time. So a mass gaining phase can be very, very important or very, very useful, sorry, to help you get tools to deal with stress in ways that you haven't thought of before, which don't involve food or alcohol. The next thing with a mass gaining phase and a healthy relationship with food is that you start using foods with a wide variety of flavors and seasonings, et cetera, to create more interest in your palate to allow you to eat more and more food. So having more diversity in the diet and Seeking that out in a mass gaining phase is actually a healthy food behavior that you can do to have a healthy relationship with food. So guys, that's a really different way to look at a breakdown of what a healthy relationship with food is. We know that we don't want to use food for emotional stress. We know we don't want to be binge eating. We know we don't want to be actively harming ourselves with our energy intake, whether it's too little or too, too much. What we can do to take this to the next level is to consider what dieting phase we're in what are the healthy behaviors of that dieting phase? And from there, which ones are we following? Which ones are we not following? Which ones could we have a bit more work on? And what strategies do we need to help our clients have a better relationship with food, to be able to get better results and to be able to apply that relation to food to the different stages of their dieting journey? If you can do that, you're doing an absolutely amazing job with your clients. Thanks for listening, guys. Stay tuned. I'll speak to you all very soon.